Craig here for another episode of Make America Healthy Again with Dr. Bronwyn Fitz. Hi, Bronwyn. Hi, Craig. How are you? Pretty good. So Bronwyn is an integrative gynecologist uh, with offices in Greenwich, Connecticut, and now in Harrison, New York. Uh, yeah. So um, ladies in the northern suburbs uh, have a few options now to... Uh, to visit with Bronwyn uh, for their uh, gynecological care holistically. Uh, the topic today is integrative medicine and functional medicine. What's the difference? And I'd like to know what the difference is. Um, so maybe we can kind of just get right at it into the distinctions between, because we know that they're both holistic uh, therapies, uh, but for patients, there's so much information now. And so, it's so uh, you know, it's so easy to get very confused about the distinctions here. Uh, so maybe you can give a little overview about what integrative medicine, functional medicine is, we can talk a little bit about both. Yeah, yeah, great, I'd love to. It's, um, uh, both fields uh, have a lot in common. There's a lot of overlap, and um, so that's why a lot of times I think the, the words come up um, in similar situations, and, and so people get confused. Um, but essentially, the way I like to think of it um, is that integrative medicine is sort of a larger umbrella phrase that encompasses um, traditional medicine, as well as kind of all healing modalities that could potentially be useful. So that would include um, nutrition and mind-body therapies, uh, herbal medicine or botanicals, as we call them, um, manual medicine, physical therapy, um, osteopathy, um, chiropractic, all of that together, um, along with other um, healing traditions, things like traditional Chinese medicine, Chinese herbs, acupuncture, Ayurveda, other Native American um, uh, and, and other indigenous um, healing traditions, as well as functional medicine. So functional medicine, in, in the way I look at it, falls underneath the larger umbrella of, of integrative medicine. Um, and functional medicine shares many of those, you know, all those things I just was talking about in terms of recognizing and utilizing lots of other healing modalities. I think there's kind of one key um, uh, difference that uh, functional medicine really focuses on, and that is uh, always getting to the root cause of what's going on. Uh, instead of just coming up with looking at someone's symptoms and giving it a label, um, okay, like I'm going to give you the diagnosis of, you know, diabetes or something like that. And then, um, and then just looking for a medicine, um, or, or even a lifestyle change to address that, that diagnosis in, in functional medicine, it doesn't stop at the diagnosis the, there's always the underlying, um, search for like, why is this happening? You know, can we reverse this process, you know, at the cellular level, um, through nutrition, through stress management, through, you know, other, um, you know, through other avenues. And so it's, it's a little bit nuanced, you know, it's not to say that traditional doctors aren't interested in root cause or that integrative doctors aren't interested in root cause. But I think that's the main thing that really separates functional medicine out. That's the core. Now, uh, integrative medicine, it, it sounds like you're talking about it in two different ways. One, that there's a sort of a, uh, a literal um, uh, certification of uh, integrative medicine, which you, which you have received, and that's under the sort of, uh, I would say, with the umbrella or the, uh, uh, the tutelage of Dr. Andrew Weil, right? I mean, so, so that's a specific program. Yeah, so there's, in terms of the training and how, um, how a practitioner becomes, uh, you know, in the, in the case of integrative medicine, how a doctor becomes an integrative medicine trained doctor, there's a number of different fellowships throughout um, the country. Uh, I attended a two-year fellowship through the Arizona um, Center for Integrative Medicine, which is located at the University of Arizona. And, um, you know, there are a few others, and they're very, they're structured academic programs, and then you sit for a board exam that's um, offered by the American Board of Physician Specialties. And it's very much like, um, you know, you, you're an internist and you get, you know, boarded in, you know, rheumatology or something. There's, there's a training program, there's a track, there's a certification process. Um, so, so that is the case for integrated medicine. For functional medicine, um, there's, it's not recognized by the ABMS or the ABPS. Those are the American Board of Medical Specialties and American Board of Physi Physician Specialties. So for functional medicine, there's not, um, unfortunately yet, maybe one day, um, there's not that level of recognition at the professional level um, in terms of the certifying bodies. There is a very rigorous um, 
uh, course of study that you can um, pursue through the Institute of Functional Medicine. And there are other bodies that teach functional medicine as well. I've been doing my training through the IFM. And they there's a an academic curriculum um, of self-study and, um, and going to conferences. And then there is a certifying test, a very rigorous test at the end. Um, right now, IFM is the main body that, that administers that test, and they recognize that test. The other key difference is that for functional medicine, other... Um, licensed types are are recognized and can sit for that exam, can do that training and study and sit for the exam. So um, chiropractors and dentists and, um, you know, physician assistants and physical therapists. So other and nutritionists, other um, uh, professionals can do the IFM, the functional medicine certification, um, and, and they all sit for the same exam as the doctors. Right. So uh, you talked about in one distinction about functional medicine saying that um, it looks at the root cause, but it seems to me that, um, uh, that, that that would be probably true of integrated medicine as well, because that seems to be really the hallmark of, of, of holistic versus allopathic healing. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're looking at the whole body, but we're also looking at the cause rather than just treating symptoms. Um, mm -hmm. So is, is, it, is, it, is it, are you suggesting that... Um, Looking at symptoms uh, or or looking at causal uh, contributors is something that integrated medicine isn't focusing on as well, and that's why you look towards you know in your own practice towards functional medicine because that was a personal concern of yours. Yeah, I mean, in integrated medicine, there's definitely the um, the desire to to get to the heart of what's going on. Um, and they, but they don't focus on it quite the same way that the functional medicine doctors do. And the other difference I'll say is that, um, in integrative medicine, uh, it, it's broader in the sense that it looks at, um, acute problems versus chronic problems. So if someone gets a cold virus, um, or, you know, a, a urinary tract infection or, you know, sort of an acute illness, um, or undergoes an acute trauma, in the integrative approach, there's um, there are uh, ways to approach that. Whereas in functional medicine, it's really focusing on um, wellness and uh, prevention of chronic disease. So there's that whole sort of side of medicine looking at acute problems. It, it's not really addressed with functional medicine. You don't go to your functional medicine doctor because you have a cold, you know, or you got the flu. Whereas you might go to your regular family doctor or you might go to your integrative doctor because, you know, we'll have um, remedies to, to help with that kind of acute problem. So it's getting sort of nuanced. But, yeah, so that's why integrative is, is generally the broader umbrella and mm -hmm. functional is, um, is a smaller umbrella. And that's why functional medicine falls very nicely under the umbrella of integrative medicine and why I think they work so well together because I you know I do both. I do everything. I utilize functional medicine techniques and strategies as well as, you know, everything else. So one thing you said is that both approaches are patient centered. And I think everybody, uh, you know, uh, who who certainly been getting medical care in the United States for, you know, uh, generations knows what knows what that means. Uh, and 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 meaning that, you know, uh, uh, patients are respected. It, it seems like it's almost more of a collaboration uh, yeah. between, between patient and, and physician rather than the old model, which is like the physician is the expert and the physician is sort of uh, sort, sort of a, a sub role to, to, to that. Uh, so this is respectful role. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, it occurred to me that um, in reading your blog about it, that uh, in both cases, uh, a physician during the intake, you really have to be more of a therapist, uh, mm -hmm. as as or as much a therapist than you have to be as a physician, um, because you really have to get people to open up uh, mm -hmm. about about what these underlying emotions are. So, uh, can you talk a little bit about your experience with that, and and and, and compared to like uh, 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 practicing allopathically, uh, you you probably didn't have to get into that as much, and and and, and how that how that occurs for you. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I, I agree. Both um, integrative and functional are very patient focused, patient centered. And uh, so one of the ways we are uh, you know, able to focus so much in a very personalized way is that we give ourselves time 
which is one of the first, you know, um, differences from a, a regular traditional doctor where your annual visit might be, you know, scheduled for 15 or 30 minutes. Um, if you're really lucky, you know, 45 minutes, um, <clears throat> you know, I spend at least 90 minutes to sometimes two hours with my initial patients getting to know them. And they've already filled out like a 12 page intake form, which I've already spent at least an hour or two ahead of time reading. So it's, you know, it's a much longer time to get to know that individual. And it really is comprehensive. It's getting into every single aspect of your life, your, you know, your emotional health, um, your physical health, what you're eating, what your habits are, what you, you know, your pursuits in your free time are, how's your sleep, I mean, everything. Um, and it, both um, strategies, uh, um, um, paradigms actually, uh, really focus on the partnership, like you were saying, between the doctor and the patient. And it's less of a hierarchical, at least that's my goal. I don't want it to be as much of a hierarchical um, <clears throat> relationship. And in my fellowship, actually, we did, we spent quite a bit of time um, learning how to engage the patient. Uh, there's a whole style of uh, patient interviewing called motivational interviewing, um, where you really analyze, you know, how you are with patients and do I ask um, closed ended questions? Do I, uh, do I ask open ended questions? And if you're um, working with someone on a, you know, a difficult um, topic or a difficult conversation, you know, how do you, how do you get the patient to drive the conversation instead of the doctor driving the conversation? And that's a key difference because if you feel like your doctor is just kind of telling you what to do all the time, you're not necessarily open to it. And behaviors don't necessarily change when someone just is kind of like telling you what to do. But there's actually a technique where as a, as a doctor or a practitioner, you can engage a patient in such a way where they're utilizing um, their own words and their own ideas to um, spell out how they're going to make these behavioral changes or, you know, how they vision their life in the future. Um, studies show that they're much more likely to actually implement um, the changes that they're talking about if they vocalize them themselves as opposed to having the doctor tell them. So this is a whole technique that, you know, we learned um, and it's really valuable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Well, this has been very informative. Uh, I'm certain for gynecological patients, it's, it's helpful to know that uh, whatever symptoms they face in their gynecological uh, uh, case could be also contributed to or by other things, which is why the holistic approach is so valuable. So it's so great that you offer that service. Yeah. So, and we'll make sure that people know about your new Harrison office as well. Uh, so, so it's a little closer for people in the Rock and Westchester circuit. But thanks so much, and we'll talk again soon. All right. Thanks, Greg. Take care. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.